Na karibu tena mtazamaji tuendelee na taarifa zetu. Tunarejelea taarifa yetu kuu ambapo kamati maalum ya bunge la seneti iliyobuniwa kusikiliza kesi ya kutimuliwa mamlakani kwa gavana wa kaunti ya Taita Taveta Granton Samboja inafanyika ama inafanya kikao chake cha kwanza katika majengo ya bunge. Gavana Samboja alingolewa mamlakani na wakilishi wadi katika kura ya kutokuwa na imani kwenye utendakazi wake kuhusiana na mgogoro wa bajeti uliozuka kati yake na wakilishi hao. Gavana Samboja hakuwepo katika kikao hicho cha ufunguzi lakini akawakilishwa na wakili wake Nelson Havi. Hebu tusikilize. You had in my opening remarks indicated that the governor had indicated he's not appearing. But now we have Mr. Havi eh, who, has, who, who has mysteriously appeared. On. <laughs> yeah, but given that situation eh, Maybe we ask now have you, to, you have had our charges. You now tell us it's your right to be here. We invited you to be here. So you're in the right place. Uh, so we would want to hear from you now that you have had the charges. Chair of uh, the Special Committee and members, uh, may I please refer the committee to Rule 16 that governs these proceedings. 16 and 17 provides that uh, after the charges have been read, an opening statement shall be made on behalf of the county assembly and on behalf of the governor. So that at this point in time, it is the county assembly to make its opening statement then we'll respond to that opening statement. And in that regard, we propose to raise a preliminary issue in our opening statement. Yeah, now, now we, are, we, we are not at the stage of opening remarks. We are at the stage of preliminaries, if you have any. If you don't have any, then we'll proceed. Yes, we have a preliminary. Yeah. Uh, Honorable Chair, the, 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 the cardinal uh, rule of natural justice requires that uh, there be notice and a hearing. Now, when these proceedings commenced before the county assembly, uh, a fundamental issue was raised, and that is the issue that propelled the governor to approach the court of law for reprieve. And that issue was that the governor had not been given the charges against him before the county assembly. You're doing a preliminary now? Yes, yes I'm doing a okay. preliminary. But then I'll give you 20 minutes. It's in order. Good. So that, uh, as I was submitting much earlier, the governor was not given notice of the charges uh, before the county assembly, neither was he heard before the county assembly. Now, as a result of that transgression by the county assembly, which contravened the standing orders of Taita Taveta County Assembly, the governor proceeded to seek reprieve before a court of law. And this was done. Is it working now? Thank you. And this was done through a petition that was filed before the High Court uh, in Nairobi being constitutional petition number 402 of 2019. Now, at the commencement uh, of uh, that petition, an order was made by Justice uh, Macau of the High Court, which uh, provided in two aspects. The first aspect of the order was to stay the resolution by the county assembly passed on the 9th of October 2019, recommending the impeachment of the petitioner by the Senate. The second aspect of that order was to restrain the county assembly from submitting that resolution to the Senate. It transpired that by the time of the making of this order, the county assembly had already transmitted the resolution to the Senate. The question therefore arose as to whether the county assembly's submission of that resolution had defeated the first aspect of the order. Now, this order was served uh, both upon the county assembly of Taita Taveta as well as the clerk of the Senate. 
and uh, for, 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 for the benefit of the chairman and the members of this uh, special committee, I've uh, come with uh, sufficient copies of that order, which we may refer to as I proceed with my... There are sufficient copies of that order. Now, notwithstanding the making of that order, the Senate uh, sat on the 15th of October when it resolved to constitute this uh, special committee to hear this matter. My client and I followed the proceedings of the Senate on that day, and it transpired from the representation by the, the, the Deputy Speaker of the Senate that he had not been made aware of the order of 11th of October 2019. Now, in view of the fact that the Senate proceeded to set up this committee, my client went back to court on the 16th of October and notified the court of uh, the constitution of this committee. On that day, the court directed that we serve the amended petition together with a hearing notice upon the Senate which was duly done. Thereafter, we appeared before the court on the 17th of October, 2019, when the Senate was not represented in court, notwithstanding the fact that they'd been served with a hearing notice and the petition together with the application for a conservatory order. Upon hearing me on the matter, the judge made a further order to supplement the order made on the 11th of October. And the order was very precise. It provided as follows, that pending the party's hearing of this application, the Senate, that is the fourth respondent, either through the plenary or its committee, any of its members is hereby restrained from deliberating, discussing, hearing, and or otherwise, continuing with the impeachment of His Excellency Grant on Samboja, the petitioner, pending the mention of the matter for directions on the 28th of October 2019. Now, again, this order was served personally upon the clerk of the Senate, as well as the director of legal and compliance on that very day. As the order was being served upon the clerk of the Senate, an invitation to appear was being served upon my farm. That was uh, on the 16th of October at around about uh, 3.48 p.m. Now, the, the, the issue that uh, is before, and before I proceed, perhaps I will also supply the committee with copies of the subsequent order. I'm aware of my own knowledge that uh, the Deputy Speaker of the Senate indicated that he will today at 2.30 make a decision as to whether the Senate can be injuncted in the performance of its duties by a court of law. But notwithstanding the pendency of this decision, which is to be made at 2.30, the Honorable Deputy Speaker indicated that this uh, special committee may proceed with the task assigned to it. Now, at this particular point in time, I just want to raise two fundamental issues which are germane to the proceedings before this special committee. And I will refer to standing order number 98 of uh, the standing orders of the Senate. Standing order number 98, in particular, standing order 98 sub rule 2. It says... Subject to paragraph 5, no senator shall refer to any particular matter which is sub judice or which by operation of any written law is secret. For the specific issue before this uh, special committee, what is of reference is the pendency of the court proceedings. Now, if you examine sub rule 2 all the way to sub rule 3, 
with particular reference to 3C, this uh, definition is made of uh, a matter that is subjudice. Civil, civil proceedings shall be deemed to be active when arrangements for hearing, such as setting down a case for trial, have been, ma have been made 